when you have atrial fibrillation, it feels like you got mice yeah. rolling bowling balls in your heart. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it yeah. scares you. Oh, it sure does. You take your heart for granted until all of a sudden it starts going yeah, like times. this. You know? I've had it many times on the airplane. Oh, many times. You had it yourself? Yes, I had it. Yes, I'm cured. I've been cured for 16 years. Uh, what I did was I basically locked myself in a medical library with a medical dictionary. You ever, do you ever try to read these things? I mean, it's like pulling teeth. <laughs> you know, they write in medical ease that yeah. nobody else can understand. So I, I sat down there and I read everything for six months. Wow. And, and I read notes and I, you know, I got, I've got cross reference. I, yes. Because I did the homework. Yes. I did the homework. I, I really researched everything. And then I said, you know, after I got cured, I said, well, why not? I'm not going to, why waste all this? Look what I had to go through to find a cure. Right. It just sort of became a vocation for me. Uh -huh. The oh. website's been up for about 10 years, afib.com. I see. You yeah, like to yeah. share your experiences yeah. with yeah. people right now, right? Yes, indeed. I sort of have a crusade, uh, Skippy. What I see on the Internet and in the media today, there's, there's all kinds of misinformation about atrial fibrillation. Misinformation. misinformation. Yeah. Let me give you an example. Okay. Womensheart.org, a very professional website, mm -hmm. put out a quiz, and one of the questions about atrial fibrillation, one of the questions was, is there a cure for AFib? And I've been, cured, I've been cured for 16 years, so I answered yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and they said, no, there's no cure for AFib. Oh, what? You know, and of course, I write them, and I say, yes, people get cured all the time. There's uh -huh. thousands of doctors doing right. this, this catheter ablation procedure. Right. Right. You know, how can you say this? They never write back. But th then I went and looked at uh, who sponsors women's womensheart.org. Yeah. Pharmaceutical companies. They, they, they don't want people cured. They want people to keep yeah. taking their meds. <laughs> they're, they're, they're responsible for all that stuff right now. I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, WebMed, WebMed just put out a couple weeks ago uh, some stuff about treating AFib, and they said, how do you treat AFib? And they mentioned catheter ablation. You know what they mentioned? What? AV node ablation and pacemaker. Now, what that is, that's like that's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Right. That's like wiping your heart's pacemaker out completely and then putting another pacemaker in. Oh. I mean, nobody in their right mind does that. Right, you of know? course not. And that's why you, you, you can't trust... I don't want so to say everything. So that is upsetting you now, right? Yes. Because I'm not saying you can't trust anything, but you got to be really suspicious when you go to the Internet, uh -huh. when you go to the media. Uh, wherever it is, be suspicious. Yes, that's right. Jane Brody put out an article on the New York Times. She's well-known. Right. And uh, she has this doctor who tells, who says, uh, uh, once you're cured of AFib, like I've been, right. you still, you still let a, are at a greater risk of stroke than the normal person does. That's totally bogus. Uh -huh. if, if you don't have AFib, you have no more risk of an atrial fibrillation stroke. Uh -huh. I mean, by definition, you're not going to get an AFib stroke. You can have another stroke, I mean a normal stroke, if there is such a thing as a normal stroke. Uh -huh. But so can anybody else. You're, you're, you're like a normal person. Right, right, right. And you're out there right now, out here, telling us the truth about it all. It's a good lesson. Absolutely, yes. yes. Knowledge is power. Knowledge dispels fear and gives control. Yes. That's right.